anointing, Mojo la blessing, Mojo la Jesus. to business this morning good morning everybody as you're coming in please go ahead and share the video on your page let's get more people to connect uh, on the show uh this morning real quick i'm gonna just rush through it because i got a lot of stuff to do this morning um i, I want to just quickly thank those ones that have been calling me who called me yesterday uh to appreciate us uh for the show from yesterday uh as far before you actually get engaged with uh, a single mother who is a mature person who has been divorced for so long uh, always make sure that you uh, go and learn what you need to know about those kind of people uh, those kind of people are not the kind of people that you just want to uh, fall in love with you have to uh, know exactly uh, who they are what they've been through what they're going through all of that stuff uh, you must know uh, so that you will be able to uh, treat them correctly, love them correctly, uh, be able to uh, respect them the way uh, they deserve to be respected and, and all that. And um, it, it, it actually it, uh, applies to men also 
Because somebody called me and said, well, my wife walked away from the home and I was the only one who took care of the kids uh, for over 10 years. Uh, and so that kind of a man has turned to be a woman also. So for you as a woman looking for a way to date such a man like that, it's going to be a little difficult. So if you listen to the show from yesterday, you will be able to understand um, what you will need to do and how you are going to be able to do it. Uh, the topic from today is, uh, I see so many Christians, they believe uh, that uh, God is not real uh, because they have been failed many times. And that's not the truth. God is real. Uh, God is so, so real. He's still working miracles. He's still doing great things in the life of people. It's just the mentality. It's just the interpretation of the Bible uh, that is messing a lot of people up. Uh, most, most especially we Nigerians. Uh, we come from a background knowing that God is a magician, not a miracle worker. The definition of miracle is different from the kind of definition that we have given miracles. All right, so we, we, we put miracles side by side with magic. We, we make them to be equal. Uh, you know, that's the way we see miracles. We, we make miracles to be equal to magic. All right, and that's what is messing us up. And that's what is messing us up. Uh, it's, uh, it's very terrible. It's, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. All right. So I, I'm here today to actually speak, uh, on that topic or the word they call, uh, or, or the statement on merited favor or merited favor. They, they quote so many scriptures. They come with so many scriptures. God said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on global activity. Good morning. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on this, 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 that. They say all manners of things. Now, I come to tell you that there is nothing called unmerited favor. Uh, that word unmerited favor is cooked up by men, by people. They cooked it up. And that is what is messing everybody up. But today I'm going to kind of like quickly break it down to us. Now, the first thing I want us to see is this. Now, it is not unmerited favor for you to enjoy the rain. It is not a merited favor for you to enjoy the sun. It is not a merited favor for you to plant and for God to show increase on it. It's your entitlement. You are entitled to those things the moment you are created by God. That's the responsibility of God for over humanity. Either you are good or you are not good. You are a believer. You are a Muslim. You are, you are a pagan. You are whatever it is. That is the responsibility of God over his creation he created us and he must give it to us those are the things it's just like you giving back to your children all right sending them to school is not a merited favor feeding them daily giving them food is not a merited favor giving them shelter is not a merited favor that, those are your responsibilities as a family as a as a father that's your responsibility those are things you have to do those are things you have to do all right so you 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 do it's not unmerited all right? Oh, it's the responsibility of God over everyone created by God to live on planet Earth. Okay? So he, he made that one possible for us to be able to live a befitting life, a good life, a glorious life. Just the same way when you give back to your children, the kids didn't ask for you to give back to them. You are the one who brought them. So you created them. So you have to feed them. You have to clothe them. You have to put roof over their head. You have to send them to school. It's not unmerited. All right? Not unmerited. Now, when you now begin to look at it and you come to Christianity and you say, oh, Jesus Christ came, he died for us, he's unmerited. Listen to me. It's the original plan of God from the book of Genesis when man fell. That Jesus Christ will come and then he will die for humanity. But the part of the death and the resurrection that is not free is this. John 3.16 says, for whosoever believeth in him. That means you have a responsibility. It's no longer free. Salvation is not free because there is a responsibility that you have to put into it. What is that? Believing. The death of Christ is not going to work for everybody. The death of Christ is not going to save everybody. The death of Christ will only save those that believe. The believing part of it happens to be a choice that somebody made to enjoy salvation. 
So if you're coming and saying, oh, your merited favor, Jesus died for all humanity and everybody is gradually going to have everlasting life. No, not everybody will have everlasting life. The ones that refuse to put the work into it will not enjoy everlasting, everlasting life. So the responsibility of a man is for him or her to believe. Believing is a choice. It's a lot of work to believe in him. Whosoever believe, those are the ones that will be saved. Those are the ones that will have everlasting life. So it's a work. You made the choice to believe him. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. It becomes an input that you have to put into it. It's no longer free because you have to do your part in salvation. And then you work on your salvation. 100% every time you work on your faith, work on your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to make sure that you build your faith in God. How do you build your faith? Is by hearing the word. And hearing alone is a work. It's a choice to develop your faith. So it's not free. It's something you do. You have to do it. If you refuse to do it, then the salvation will die in you. Are you, are you guys feeling me? I can see a lot of you are quiet. Are you guys feeling me today? So, so that's the issue. You have to work it. Salvation is not free. It's not free. You will have to work on that stuff. So it's not unmerited. It's something you merit if you believe. So when you believe it, it becomes something that you merit. All right? You merit that stuff. That's just the issue right there. I want to I want to just quickly digress a little bit. I want to digress a little bit. How many of you guys have seen anyone that didn't go to school praying for a merited favor? And before you get to know it, God just say, okay, I'm going to give you a merited favor. Become a doctor. There's none. You can never find anybody unless you will become, unless you will become a Yalagbo. Unless it will become a Yalagbo. And if your merited favor is on the Yalagbo level, that's, that's your own palaver. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sow, so shall he reap. There is an input. There is a part of man. And there is the part of God. If you refuse to do your part, God will refuse to do his part. When the children of God wanted to cross the river Jordan, he asked them to cross carrying the ark. That was an instruction. And they carried the ark. They followed the instruction of God. And then they stepped in the water. And God now did this part. By lowering the water down for them to pass. Now, when they wanted to cross the river, I mean the Red Sea, God instructed Moses, lift up your rod. So he lifted up his rod, and the rod, after being lifted, God departed, I mean, parted the Red Sea. So there is the part of man, that, that's your input, and then there is the part of God, that is going to be the output, all right? But the issue is this, just raising up the rod alone. Does it make no sense? That's a tiny little input. But when you saw, when they saw the result, the output of what God has done, he parted the Red Sea, so they believed Kai. This is greater than what I actually put into it, so this is unmerited. We don't merit what he's doing. No, 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 no. Your input will always be smaller compared to the output. That is when you plant. When you plant a seed, the seed will not grow and bring you the same seed. It will bring forth multiple. So anything you sow, it is not going to be the same thing you reap. You reap it in, I mean, in number, you reap in multiple fold. That when it comes to you, you will believe you do not merit it. But you have done something. The Bible says, Paul plant Apollo waters. And then God sow it, increase. God will not sow increase when there is no seed in the ground. When there is nobody watering it. So the part of man is to sow the seed. The part of man is to water the seed. The part of God is to show increase on those things. Now, somebody engaged me online. Was talking about, oh, somebody uh, survived plane crash. Okay? He didn't survive plane crash because he's a Christian. We have got record of so many unbelievers. So many unbelievers who survived plane crash. Alright? That's just a game of luck. Maybe the seat that he sat on. 
Maybe there is something around the place that protected their life. We have seen a lot of people engage in accident. And everybody in the car, they died. And only one person. And that person just finished having sex with another person's wife. And sat down behind the driver. And when the accident occurred, he got speared. All right? And he got speared. All right? And I'm not going to say there is nothing like that, that God cannot protect somebody. God can still protect you if there is still an assignment for God to do, uh, for an assignment God wants you to do. He can decide to spare your life because of what you have done. If you remember, there was a man in the Bible called Ezekiah. He was about to die. God sent a messenger to him and he said, Ezekiah, you are about to die. Put your home together. And the man of God walked away from him and stopped. And then the next thing he did, he went back to God. He said, God, you remember, I have not done this. I have not done that. This is who I used to be. I did this to you. I did this to you. All what he did is what the man was putting before God. And God now said, because of this, I will elongate your life 15 more years so you can complete the assignment that I've given unto you. That was why he had extra 15 years. Because of his input, because of what he has done for God, because he has not finished his assignment. All right, that's the reason why he got elongated. It is not because of any other thing, but because of that. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that people do not understand that anything that you get from God, you have already worked for it. Anything we are all the product of the choices we made some few years before. We are, we are, we are the product of what we have made, or the, I mean, the product of the choices that we have made, like ten years, fifteen years ago. All right, that's who we are today. All right, and then you will not believe it that when you are making that choice, understand? You made that choice when you are not a believer. You are unbeliever when you made the choice. All right. Now you are a believer, but you are still living under the same, the same roof, and nothing is changing for you. How many of you have seen a medical doctor in Nigeria, and then they leave Nigeria, and they come here as a born again Christian, and they enter America and become a taxi driver? Why can't unmerited favor happen to them? No, tell me, tell me. Have you not seen? Have you not seen a lawyer? left Nigeria as a born-again Christian. And then they left Nigeria, they come to America, and they are taxi drivers today or security guards today. Why can't unmerited favor change things for them? All right? You see, the issue is this. When you now get to the new country where you're going, then you have to obey. You input something. You go back to school. You take exams. You pass the exam. Then as you're doing it, you begin to say, this is the handiwork of God. As you're making choices, God is following you. God is blessing the work of your hand. What you are doing is what God is blessing. If you refuse to do anything, God will bring any result for you. That's why he said, whatsoever a man sow, that's what he reap. When he said that we have mercy, Upon whom I will have mercy on. Those are men that gladdens the heart of God. God said unto Abraham, If I can find only five of people that are good serving God, I will spare a whole nation. All right? They couldn't find it. None of them was doing that. God did not spare them for merited favor. There was one man there, the man escaped in Sodom and Gomorrah, not because of merited favor, it is because of his service unto God. That is Lot. It's because he was good. Because he served God. There is, a, there is an input and then God is now blessing that input by sparing the life of Lord. So, so many of the Christians today, we tell them unmerited favor. They die in church because of unmerited favor. What they did not work for, the money you did labor for, the money you did work for, is God, God is going to throw the money at your lap. Hallelujah. Yeah, you will go to sleep and you wake up in the morning a millionaire. It doesn't happen like that. We are just so stupid. We just believe this is the way things work. Things don't work that way. Now, the person that just came on right now, you have already missed it. I can't repeat the whole stuff because you are the one who engaged me in this particular argument this morning. Uh, DJ Flo uh, Flo 2. 
So you have to go and listen to this particular episode all over because you have missed it. I can't go back to it. All right. So the reason is that we now come up with all of this preaching. And that's why we render people useless in church. And they believe that God can just pick you and just say, I put money into the hands of this person. Now, I said this before. Whatsoever the unbeliever can do by themselves, God will not do it for you. There is a preacher putting it in Lagos now. The preacher took that message to, uh, to, to Adi Farasin's church about a few Sundays ago. When he preached it, everybody got shocked. All right? If the unbelievers can buy a car, God will not do it for you. Go and pray for money tonight. God won't do it for you. Because he already gave us ability. That is what grace is. Ability. He said, behold, I have given you the ability to create wealth. All right? God won't give you wealth. You have the ability in you. That's why you have to go and develop your ability. Go to school. Go and learn a trade. Go and do one thing. And then when you finish doing it, that's your input. Then the output now belongs to God. That's why he said, pour plants, Apollo waters, and then God show it increase. All right? The increase that God will show is written on what you have done. If you didn't do anything, you don't get nothing. That's why the Bible says, cast your bread upon many waters. After a long time, it will come back to you. It means invest. Invest in so many things. If you refuse to invest, you don't harvest nothing. It means you have to become a farmer, become a sower, sow something, water the thing, and then God will show increase. That's why he said, I will bless the work of thy hand. You don't have anything in your hand, God is not blessing it. All right? You don't have nothing. If Dan Gote can become a billionaire and he's actually helping Christians, is it he, is he no shame on Christians? If you are preaching all this unmerited favor all around the place, is it not a shame on you that God has not even merit, has not given you unmerited favor to hire Dan Gote to be a driver in your own company? All right? Uh, is, it not a, is it not a slap on the face of God for you to be a pastor? You left Nigeria sick to come to America for treatment and you die inside hospital in America. With all the prayer they've been praying in Nigeria, oh, you cannot die, you cannot die, and the person eventually died. Okay, is it not a slap? Why can't we have a merited favor and God will say, you are actually married, there is a merited favor in your life, you can't die at all. Okay, the issue is this, you don't just get to that level. You must have worked. You must have done one thing. All right, God will always remember the sacrifice. Okay, Solomon did not get wisdom by a merited level. He got wisdom by sacrificing. He sacrificed 1,000 head of cattle. That's what he did. To be able to get what he requested for. David did not just become a king. He fought the battle with Goliath. He killed Goliath to become who he became. So, you are always there. You say, oh, Mary, tell people. Oh, Mary. Jesus Christ did not just end up to become powerful. Jesus did not. The name Jesus didn't become an household name. He had to do some things. He died on the cross. He resurrected. Then God now said, a name has been given unto you that is above every name that uh, the, at the sound of the name of Jesus. Every name was bow. He, he had to do something. There is an input before the output was able to come. Even you, when you go to work, do you sit down inside your office and be praying, Father, or meditate favor, and then he just gave you salary for not working? Tell me. If you are the kind of person, you'll be praying for a merited favor, and then in your office, they say, don't work oh, You don't have to work oh. All what we're going to be doing is to just be giving you salary because you have a merited anointing on your life. It doesn't work that way. No. So many people will come to church and give testimony. Ah, I just got a job. Oh, I, I, out of three of us, they just picked me. No, 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 no. They didn't just pick you. You are qualified. You are qualified for the job. That's why they picked you. Okay, your resume may not be as good as those other ones. They know what exactly they are looking for. So many times, they hire people with YEC. They hire people with GED. And what they do is that they train them to do the work of a master's degree holder. They don't want to pay salary to the master degree person. Because if they should hire a master degree holder, they will be paying $150,000 a year. So they believe, let me hire this particular GED guy. Let us put him to training. Let, let us train him to do the work that the master degree order can do. And then they hire you. Then you go to church. Ah, 
I only have you in your or medical paper. No, no, no. You went to school. You had you had a degree. Have you had the, the, the GED? The GED is what worked for you. Is what work work for you. If you don't have any paper, nobody is gonna nobody they're not gonna accept you. Or merited favor. Have you seen anybody come to America and then they pray? And God just say there is an unmerited favor. You don't have to fight for green card, though. Green card will just come to your house. Have you seen anybody like that? That has been that has been blessed with God, that have been blessed with unmerited favor. That just entered to America, America where everybody is looking for paper. They are running from one place to another place. They are jumping everywhere looking for paper. And the person is on the mountain praying. Ah, Kalababa. Or merited favor. And then the next day, immigration just call him and say, Ah, you have been shown favor. Favor has come for you. We have had that. God just spoke to us. God spoke to us in the immigration office that we will give you green card without filing. Have you, show me the person. Bring the person to me. Let the person come and talk to me that I am the one that immigration called. And they, and they gave me green card for not doing anything. Do show me. Show me the person. There is nothing you do in this life. In this life. Anything you enjoy in this life from God. You must have done something. Your input may be very small. But the blessing will be so big. Alright. When you look at the process of having a baby. All you do is to put a little tiny spermatozoon. Into the ovary of a woman. And then when God will breathe upon it, you see a big baby. Okay? Are you not supposed to say, ah, or merited favor? Do you know the work you did? You have to bounce, bounce, bang. You, you, are, you are banging the wife. It's a lot of work. You release the spam. The spam is good. I didn't mean the past. The spam is not good. The baby is not going to come. Okay? The baby won't come. You have worked. You banked. You, you, you release the spermatozoon that is good. The spermatozoon has the power to swim. Went all the way to the ovary, fertilized the ovary. That was cell division. The cell division now end up to be a baby and stuff like that. And you say, oh, it's a merited favor. It's not a merited favor. You have done something. All right? When well, you are not baby Jesus. And that is why so many people that could not have children normally, they have to go through IVF. IV, IVF. And stuff. So they put, they put uh, multiple, multiple spam into the ovary. And that is why they are having twins, triplets, and all that kind of stuff. And then you see, and when you see somebody that has been waiting for a long time, and then suddenly they have twins, or they have a uh, triplets, we say, ah, or many times they no, 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 no. Do you know how many times they have gone to the doctor? Do you know how many times they are taking injections? Do you know how many times they remove the spam of this person, put it into this one? Do you know? Have you heard about it? They, they won't tell you. They won't tell you. You see, God decided to honor the struggle. He blessed the hand work of those people. He blessed, he blessed their input. The input of those ones became blessed. All right? That's why you saw, that's why you're able to see those babies coming to them. That's why you see it. All right? But so many of you don't want to understand. You put God as a magician. So you have been praying and nothing is happening. And then you say, maybe God doesn't exist. Maybe God doesn't exist. It, God does exist. He's a super God. He only expects you to do your part. There is a part of men and there is a part of God. If you refuse to do your part, you remember Jehoshaphat. God said, he said, this battle is mine. But he didn't go there to fight by himself. He requested that Jehoshaphat should go to battle. He must be singing. The part of Jehoshaphat is to sing. Compare singing to killing enemy. He's so tiny. Alright? So when you say, oh, he's a merited favor. No, 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 no. Jehoshaphat did something. You know what he did? He gathered his army. They buy the trumpet. They buy the trampoline. Trampol they bought every instrument they need. They rehearsed the song. And then they went to battle. When they got there, they didn't keep quiet. They began to sing. And the Bible says, as they began to sing, God came down and destroyed their enemies on their behalf. So you must do something. You must do something to open and to move the hand of God. That is why your seed will open the hands of God. That is why your prayer will go to the ears of God. Even though he knew what to do for you, he's expecting you to do something. Don't be shouting on merit and favor here. You got to do something. You got to sow seed. Okay, you sow seed. All right, that's exactly what it is. Somebody told me sometimes it goes there. Pastor, me my mango, mango, man, who like to let me money so so oriented ballet. The wind must have blown the seed of mango from another yard to your yard. All right, 
He did it. They must have blown it. And then he comes there. Do you think mango does grow anywhere? He don't plant a seed. He does grow. No, he doesn't. Even the wheat. We we put the wheat. We pull it down. It is the wind blowing all the seed of this, all the seed of the wheat, to grow at the back of your house. And you don't understand it. You just become to say oh, it's a supernatural thing. Oh, it's a technical. It's not. It's not supernatural. It's growing there because the wind is blowing it to come and grow in your yard. All right. And if you refuse to weed it, then the weed will continue to grow. It is not by prayer that the weed will stop growing. You have to go outside, take your cutlass, cut it off, pull it out, and then the weed will be dead. Or, or spray it. Or spray it. You are talking about a meditative people. You see, this is the reason why a lot of Christians believe God is not real. This is the reason why we teach them nasty, crazy stuff. So many women are single today because they preach to them about unmerited favor. Just be praying. Husband will come. Jesus will bring husband. And they are praying, they are praying, they are praying. Husband didn't come. One woman told me recently, he said, Pastor Zola, I have prayed. I have fasted. And I want to let you know, it has been over 27 years now. I've been fasting and praying. Nothing has happened. I, he said, I don't think God exists. I said, madam, God, God does exist. Is it because of your stupidity, your uselessness, that you don't have understanding? It's only salt and water in your head. That is what is preventing God from working. You have to search. That's what the Bible says. He said, he who finds. He's not, he's not sitting down and be praying. You have to put effort. Your effort is what God is going to bless. God wants to bless your effort. All right? That's what he wants to bless. All right? So, you, you, you don't believe some pastors telling you or merited favor. There is nothing like that. Nothing like a merited favor. Your life must be in tune with God for miracles to happen to you. And what do we call miracles? Miracles are things that you are not expecting. You don't expect miracles. Miracles are things you are not expecting. That God just, he will just do it. And he will not just do miracles. He will do miracles in the life of those ones that pleases him. He will do miracles in the act, in the life of the ones that are standing with him, right standing with God. People that have right standing with God, they have done something. That's why the Bible says, whosoever believe, the part of believing is the work of man. God will not believe on your behalf. God will not believe for you. You have to believe to enjoy everlasting life. Jesus Christ is a free gift to humanity. He died for us freely, okay? But the issue is this. You will not still enjoy eternity if you refuse to believe. That is the part of man and that is the part of God. The part of God is to send the son. Your part is to believe him. The part of believing is not free. You've done something. All right? You've done something. For your healing process, for your miracles to happen, you must have faith. The having faith part of it is what you have, what you have sown. It's a seed. The faith itself is a seed. To have faith is you are doing something. Without faith, it cannot happen to you. The Bible says without prayer and fasting, this cannot happen. So when you pray and you fast, that's your input. Nothing is free. That's your input. People that do not pray and fast, they don't get the miracles. All right? But if you fast and pray, then you will get the miracle. That means you have input something. You have put something on the table. You put something on the table. Whatsoever a man sow, he shall reap it. You don't get nothing. You don't enjoy nothing. Apart from the responsibility of God on humanity. The responsibility of God on humanity is to give us rain. Either you are good or you are not good. You are a murderer. You are a witch. You are a wizard. Rain must fall. Either you are a witch or you are not a witch or whatsoever. You will plant a seed and it must grow. It's part of the responsibility of God. To humanity, not to Christians. It's not Christians. It's to humanity. The sun must shine to everybody, on everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. That's the responsibility of God to humanity. He created us and that is his responsibility. Okay? For the sun shining, he is not unmerited. For the rain falling, he is not unmerited. It's the responsibility of God. Like the responsibility of a father to his children to give them a roof. To feed them. To send them to school. That is it. That's the responsibility of God. So if you Christian don't believe it and don't understand, it's like your eyes are you are blind. You don't even know other people exist. You think only Christians are the one that exist. 
Everything you see is about Christian. Oh, it's the Bible. Oh, it's fasting and prayer. Oh, it's the Jesus. It's not. The Muslim are there too. They have their own religion. And they are doing whatever they do. And they believe that God is working for them. The pagans are there. They are doing their own. Every other person they live in this world. And the rain is falling upon everybody. That's the responsibility of God. Over all. Not all over one, one person. So we are bastardized relationship. I mean, the relationship with God. We are messed up Christianity. We make Christianity to look like magic. Magic. It's not magic. It's the way you live your life. You live your life pleasing God. You do whatever God is instructing you to do. And let me tell you something. The moment you pray, God will send information. If you refuse to hear the information from God, then you are doing something else. The miracle won't happen to you. Prayer is a means of communication to God, with God. You pray to him, he will say something back to you, okay? And then you take that order and go and do whatever it is that he has asked you to do. Then you will see the miracle. But you, oh, it's all about praying, 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 shouting, 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 shouting. What is God saying? You don't know. And then you are wondering, is God still existing? No. Is God still existing? I don't think God exists. God is existing. You don't hear him. You have not been hearing him. You have been shouting on him, but you refuse to let him speak. The instruction that he wants to give to you as by your prayer, you don't have it. There is a secret thing that you have to do. But he wants to give it to you, but you refuse to hear it. You're just shouting, shouting, shouting. All right? And then you're not saying, oh, merited. Oh, merited. What is unmerited? God is saying, shut up. You have to do your part. Then I'll do my part. Pour plant, Apollo waters, and then God show increase. How do we plant? How do we water? It is through our effort. God will not plant it on your behalf. God will not water it for you. You will be the one to do all that. The part of God is to show increase. All right? That's the way it is. That's why the Bible says the sower, he woke up in the morning. It's a walk. To wake up in the morning to sow, it's a walk. And then God didn't give him a seed. All right? He had to find the seed. He bought the seed in the market. He bought the seed in the market. And then he began to sow it. Okay, he began to plant it. He didn't even know where he was supposed to plant it. He was just planting it everywhere. That's why the Bible says, cast your bread upon many waters. You won't know which one is going to blow. And then he planted it. Well, some fell on the road, some on the roadside, some in between the tongue, and then some on the good ground. And then God showed it increase. And then they bring forth fruit in multiple fold, in 200, in 100, in 30s, in 60s. The increase did not just come without him sowing. He had to wake up in the morning. He had to buy the seed. He had to walk around and sow it. He didn't know where to sow it. He was, was just sowing it. He was just gambling. And some fell on the good ground. And then God showed it increase. Don't tell me I'll be telling me that God just bless people. No. He just doesn't do that. You have to do your part. The part of a man is important because God is only going to bless the work of your hand. So for you Christians that are listening here, Okay, you don't want to become a lazy churchgoer praying for miracles when God will not do it. When God will not do it, take yourself to work. Think about a business you can start. Think about an have an idea in your head. Put your effort to work. That's why the Bible says, I have given you the grace to make wealth, the ability to make wealth. Now, everybody is different from everybody. We have different levels of grace, different levels of ability and capacity. Your input or your or your or your 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 your, your the, 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 um, the blessing of God will be based upon your ability. That is why the Bible was talking about the man who called his servant. To one he gave one talent, to another he gave two, another one he gave five, based on their ability. So you cannot compare yourself to another person. So your result will only be based on your ability. All right? If you develop your ability and you have more capacity, then God will commit more into your hand. But if your capacity is so low and small, God will only commit the small things in your hand. If you are faithful in little, okay, he will commit big things into your hand. When you are faithful in little, then big stuff will come to you. So it depends on your ability. Don't compare yourself to somebody else and don't be running another person's race. When you are running another person's race, that's when you fall. But your own ability and capacity, God will bless you based on that. You might be a pastor and you have only 50 members in your church. That's your ability. That's the capacity you have. 
when you develop your ability and your capacity, then you have more people come to your church. When you're making just only 100,000 a year, that's your ability and capacity. All right? So when you develop your ability and capacity, then you make 150,000. How do you do that? You have to go and get a master's degree. And then they promote you at work. You get the doctorate degree. Then they promote. That's your capacity. You are building it. And when you build your faith, your faith will increase. Then the level of miracles that will happen to you will begin to increase. We skyrocket. It's your level of faith, your ability, your capacity. That's what God will work with. So don't let anybody be telling you, oh, there is a unmerited favor. This doesn't happen. You can't just be praying and become a medical doctor. It doesn't happen. You have to go to school. The part of you going to school is the work. And then the part of God is to show you favor and then help you to go to school without failing. We'll give you that opportunity. You have to do your part. So it's not free. It's not unmerited. Your input is not equal to your output because God is evolved. All right? So every time you put something into something, the output will always be bigger than your input. That is what they call the sowing of the seed and the harvest, harvesting of the seed. So, and that's the principle of prosperity. The principle of prosperity is for you to sow it and then God will show increase and then you harvest it in multiple fold and that's where the blessing of God will come to you. We thank God today. We bless God today because it's not our power. It's not by power, nor by mind. Is by the Spirit of God who is propelling us. Everything we we give our achievement, we give it back to God. Like the book of Revelation, when he was talking about the elders that were surrounding the throne, he said they laid their crown down. You know what it means? Their achievement, they put it down. Says it doesn't belong to us. Even though we went to school to get it, even though we labor to get it, but it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Jesus. So they lay it down upon the one that is seated upon the throne, and they bow down before Him to say, "You are the only one that exists. We are nothing." We, 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 we dedicate our achievement unto God. We give it unto Him. It's not because we didn't work for it. It's not because we didn't put our own effort. But because we believe He's our God. So everything we have today is by the grace of God. Every effort that we put into it is by the grace of God. The strength He has given to us. The strength He has given to us is from God. The ability is from God. He gave us everything. All good gifts come from God. And then we put it to use. And He was able to show increase. He showed us increase as we put it to work and we build it. So for you people that are out there expecting a merited favor, let me tell you something. Go and take your black behind to work. Go and take your black behind. Go and take it to work. Find the business to do and see if God will not manifest. See if God will not manifest. If you will not see favor beyond your ability. You will now understand that, oh, it is not a merited favor. The kind of blessing that God is putting here is actually just greater than my input. Uh, you will now understand. That's the way it is. Peter was in the boat. Peter said, God said, Jesus said to him, he said, come. Come on the water. The man didn't want to come, but he had to take a step. If he did not take a step, Jesus won't put his leg on the water. You have to walk. You have to walk. Jesus Christ didn't command yeah, his apostles to appear. He walked around to pick them. One by one, he was one, going everywhere. He had to walk. God, before he was able to bring the earth and the heaven and earth together, he didn't just command yeah, them. He was making them. God was creating things. He was creating. He's a creator. He's not a magician. Western world made you so that God giving talent. Thank you. I saw a video today about China. A video that that stuff that just just blew me up. It just got me crazy this morning. That was why I posted. There is nothing like a merited favor, you stupid Nigerians and Africans. I saw a video today. The video I saw is about China. That in China, you can actually take your phone to the grocery store, scan the product. You will see the date that the product was harvested, the date that it was put in the store, what you can use that product for. If you want to cook and you actually take a picture of that uh, vegetable, it will show you what you can use the vegetable to cook. The second thing, when you go to the restaurant, you don't need a waiter or a waitress anymore. All you got to do is on your phone, order your food. 
A robot will bring the food to your table, you pick it up from there, and you eat. All right? So many things. When Nigerians are busy fasting and prayer, China is busy building technology. When Nigerians are busy fasting and prayer, the economy of China is busy going up. Now, Donald Trump is fighting China because they are improving, they are, they are, they are, they are developing. Nigerians are busy casting out demons, casting out and breaking powers and principalities that do not, they are not affecting them. Okay? They are not affecting them. They are busy just putting their effort on demons or powers and principalities. Oh, this are, and at the end of the day, they don't become nothing. They are just they are stupid idiots. Building 1,000 sister cathedral. Building, building 5,000 sister cathedral. Inside a shit old country. And the economy is going down. We don't even know what to do to build the economy. We just believe everything is about church, 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 church. Powers and principality die, die, die by fire. All right? That's what we believe. And this is my argument. It's just laziness. Laziness of the highest order. We cannot do nothing. We just go to church. Everybody wants to become a pastor. Oh, the I mean, pastor's business is lucrative. Oh, people are making money. Then they start preaching to people what they want people to hear. Or oh, merited favor. There is nothing like that. You have to take your black behind to walk. God is expected to bless the work of your hand. That's what God wants to bless. He's expected to bless the work of your hand. Go and throw that mentality away. And take yourself to work. And go do something about your life. Any relationship that you did not work for, it's not going to last for you. You have to work on your relationship. Go to a counselor, hire a coach. Do something about your work, about your, about your relationship. Then it will work. Don't just be praying. You don't just pray. You have to put the principle down and then you pray upon it and God will show increase. You want God to do his part, but you don't want to do your part. God is not to be mocked. He said, whatsoever a man sow, that's what he reaps. You are a product of your choice. The choices you made last year, and that's who you are this year. The choices you have made 15, 20, 000, 20 years ago is who you are today. That's who you are. That's who you are. When pastors are picking people up and smacking them on the chair, beating them in the tummy for the sake of miracle, asking them to eat glass for miracles. For miracles. What is that? For pastors asking them to drink bleach. And then some of the people that drank bleach, they were nurses. They should know that drinking bleach will kill you. And they end up drinking it. When the pastor is telling them to drink, they drank bleach. Nurses, registered nurses. Who knew that bleach is going to kill you? They drank it and they died. Pastor bringing out his banana and telling people he's anointed banana, come and put your mouth there, it will deliver you. Pastor kissing them in the mouth. And they are bringing their mouth there to be kissed by the pastor. Stupid idiots. Stupid idiots. I don't understand human beings. I don't understand people. Let's go back and reform Christianity. Let's go and preach the right messages. Let's preach the right messages. Let's change the heart of people around. Let them understand that there is a place of hard work. Hard work. Not just praying. Hard work. You have to go to school and finish school. You have to get a degree. You have to go and learn a trade. Go learn trade learning. Go and learn photography. Start adding value to the country. Find something to do. You will find out that things will work right. Nigerian government don't want electricity to be constant. They don't want electricity to be constant because that's where they eat. And then we all go to church and pray. Which prayer are you praying? I cry for Nigerians and I cry for our mentality. I think it is time for us to actually catch our back. But I see people argue with me. Oh, merited favor. This is a merited. What do you mean, oh, merited favor? Everything you do, you, you work for it already. And that's actually the principle of God. You have to work for it. Even in the Garden of Eden, he told, her, he told Adam, he said, go and name the animals. He didn't just name Amir and just give it to him and say, animals are named though. Adam, these are the name of the animal. No, no, no. He created them. He said, go and name them. When he, when he sent him out, he said, now go and be family. He didn't say food will be appearing for you. He said, go and be family. Now go and be family. They are family. When you want to have a baby, baby just don't appear or merited favor. But he does have, you have to work. You have to bang your wife. The sperm must be good. All right? To enter into the ovary that is good. And then babies are formed by God. By God. 
Many, many people that are looking for baby. They've been praying for from Genesis to Revelation. And they are still praying today. And no babies. Oh, I'm waiting for a miracle. They say, come and do IVF. They say, oh, no. Ah, I'm waiting for a miracle. Miracle, 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 miracle. And they are actually 70 years old now. Nothing. Nothing. The doctors that are doing IVF, it is the Holy Spirit who gave them that idea. The Holy Ghost. There is no, nothing. Nothing you can get. Everything you see inside of Mercedes, in the BMW, all the new cars they're doing, those things, they are, they are the handwork of the Holy Spirit. You don't get it. Anything you see today is the handwork of the Holy Ghost. Don't compare this generation with the Bible. The Bible is 2,000 years ago. This is a different generation now. God works in a different way. The language of now is different from the language of then. If you don't understand. If you don't speak the language of now, you will lose the people. And that's why we're losing the people. We are speaking the language of, of 2,000 years ago. He parted the rest. Which rest? What did he do yesterday? What, what is he doing today? That's what we should be preaching. That's what we should be preaching. We're preaching a part of resting. Which resting? How many years is resting? How many of our children can actually, uh, can actually understand what resting is? That's only your message. The message you have is the part of resting. The, the, your, the message you have is that he, 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 made, he made Lazarus to resurrect. 2,000 years ago. Talk about now. God is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Talk about what he has done today. Talk about what he did yesterday. That's what we should be talking about. If we want God to be relevant, if we want him to still be God of today, we talk about what he has done, what he's doing now, what he did yesterday, what he did five minutes ago. Those are the testimonies that we give. And these are the things that we have. And these are the things we have. But Nigerian Christians don't want to listen to that. They believe it's stupid. Oh, no, it's stupid. That's not what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what is the essence of the Holy Spirit if you are actually going to, going to be referring to something 2,000 years ago? Why is he our God today? It should be, we should call him the God of those people, not our God, because he's not doing something today. We, we, we could not pinpoint what he has done, but he's still doing things. He's giving instructions to people. People are carrying out the instructions of God. And when you carry out the instruction of God, that's, that starts to be a miracle. Every day is working miracles. Every day God is working. Every day is working. You are the one that is actually not understanding it. You are, you are not understanding it. Let me leave you guys alone, not to bore you guys at all. Let me let you guys just be. You know what I'm saying? Now, what, what you don't understand is this. God is the unchangeable changer. He remains the same. He doesn't change, but he's changing things around. He's changing things around. All right? That's the God that we serve. He speaks the language of now, not the language of yesterday. Not the language of yesterday. Every day, God is changing things around. He said in the book of Isaiah, He said, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Haven't you seen? I'm doing a new thing. He's always doing a new thing all the time. All the time, He's doing new things. You see God in, in everything. In the time of the Bible, they were not driving cars. He brought a new thing today. Pastor Beckley, good morning. In the days of the Bible, they are not living in skyscrapers. Today, we are doing that. He gave us the idea to do it. He's developing human brain. That's what he's doing. In the Bible, they don't have iPhone, but today we are having iPhone. He's developing us. Getting us ready for the time. He said a time of knowledge will come. A time that people will become knowledgeable. And this is the time. I don't understand us why we want to get stuck in the past. Let's look into the future and let's get, let's get God out. Let's get him out of the box. Let's get God out of the box. God cannot be boxed. All right? For people that will understand God for real, there are people that can actually think outside of the box. If you are this kind of a stupid person that always want to actually box God, it won't work for you. You will continue to quote scripture and say, in 2,000 years ago, he parted the Red Sea. No, 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 no. Red Sea story is late. It's an old story. 
What he did yesterday is there. We're supposed to reference that. What he did 15 minutes ago, we should refer to it. He's still God, working things out daily. He's still God, doing miracles, doing new things per day. All right? That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. I'm telling you the fact. Our children are questioning our religion. They are questioning our Christianity. These kids, they are laughing at us. They come to church with us, they just stay there, they listen to us, they look us, back our heads to the wall, they just laugh. They are well educated. They know exactly what God is all about. They have a relationship with Him. We don't. We're stuck in the past. We can't even move to the future. Difficult for us to do. Difficult for us to do. The internet was not available in the time of Jesus. We use internet right now to connect to the world entirely. That is the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost right there. Jesus running his time was limited. He could not be in Nigeria and be in Ghana. Jesus could not be in America and be in Africa. He had to travel. He was limited. But now he brought the Holy Ghost. The Bible made us to understand that he will dwell in man. He can be anywhere at any time. That is God in us. Not God outside. Jesus is no longer here. God is not here. The person that is representing the two of them is the Holy Ghost. And where does he live? In man. He lives in us. We carry God. We don't go to God. We carry God. Wherever we go, we carry him. We are gods. We are gods. I want you to go and quote me anywhere. That's the scripture for you. We are God. We carry God. We don't limit God. We don't want to put God in a box. Putting God in a box is a sin. Let him walk. Let him manifest. He wants to manifest. He's knocking the door. He said, if anyone will open unto me, I will come in. But we refuse to open because we are connected to the God of yesterday. He said the same God, but we locked him out. Don't put God in the box. Open that box. Let God come out. Let him do miracles. Let him do wonders. Don't tie him down. Don't, don't just make him the God of, of the Red Sea. Don't make him the God that set free the children of Israel. Don't make him that God that is only the God that feed them, fed them with manna. Don't, no, don't, don't make him to be the guy that who, who, who parted the river Jordan. Don't make him that guy. He, he's actually greater than that guy. He actually is the same guy, but he's doing more things now. He's doing greater things in our days. Greater things. And he's not doing it by himself. We are the ones doing it. That's why he said greater things you will do. Greater things than me. What I've done. I've not done nothing. Jesus said to the disciples, he said, I've not done anything. He said greater things you will do. That's exactly what he said. And we are doing greater things right now. We are, we are, we are, we are constructing buildings. We are making Mercedes Benz. We are making iPhone. We are, you know, all kinds of great things we're doing. That is the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost. You don't box God. You open up the box. Let our children see God for who God is. He created us. We are his sheep. We are the children of God. Everything that he has given to us is what we are manifesting today. We are manifesting today. So you, do, you don't want to be making God to look like God of just yesterday alone. He's the God of every moment. God of every minute. God of every second. That's God for you. I believe in him. He exists. He's working miracles, but he's not a magician. Anything you want from God, you must input your path. There is a part of man and there is a part of God. Apollo, Paul plants, Apollo waters, and God show it increase. Don't be a lazy short goer. Be a Christian. Don't be a lazy short goer. Be a Christian. Be the one that can tell the story of Jesus. Be the one that can share testimonies. Be the one that can reference God and make God to be alive. We carry God. He lives in us. We are God's. That's who we are. That's who we are. Stop all this nonsense. Stop all this nonsense. Oh no, this prophet, they see revelation, they say, oh, this is your wife. And then three years down the road, they, they beat themselves up and then they separate. I say, how can you see that this is my wife? And then at the end of the day, we are beat up ourselves now and everybody's gone their way. So, so God, God is a, God is a fool. When the Bible says good gifts come from God, so this is not a good gift from God. Oh, I pity Nigerians. I pity us. I don't understand. Our Christianity is whack. Whack. Not correct. I pity Nigerians. And the pastors will never tell the truth because that's where they make their money. Oh, no, my JK, they told God. 
Can you talk about living alone, JJ? People are going to continue to be dumb. And they are going to continue to make money. Okay, they keep on making money. The other people will continue to be dumb. They'll be dumb. It's really to go like that one talk about. I'm telling you. They'll be dumb. They'll be dumb. They will continue to be dumb. That's why they eat grass. That's why they, they eat grass when the pastor said eat grass. That's why they actually do all manners of crazy stuff. They pour Coca-Cola on their head for anointing. They ask them to bring their mouth, they kiss them. One pastor, one stupid pastor in Ghana, he, he one particular lady said, I'm, I'm looking for a husband. He said, lie down on the couch inside church. He lie down inside. Oh, one lady, mama, lama. Oh, one lady, mama, lama. Oh, oh, answer. This is how your husband will be, will be, will be sleeping on your side. What is your own business? Oh, one lady, mama, lama. And the church congregation were singing. They were dancing and singing worship song. To this useless thing. That is when I found out that that stuff is not to do lesson. I want to let you know it's not to do lesson. Because a normal human being like myself will not be in that church and still be there. So it seems like they actually put something in the church that is tying people down for people to believe everything is okay. We have turned everything to become normal. All is good. All is good. And this is the reason our bad interpretation of the scripture, our bad messages, these are the things messing the church up. That we preach all these nonsense messages and make people just to become a slave of religion. A slave of religion. So many people who come to church and say, Pastor Jala, the youth are not praying here. They are not praying. I say, who told you they are not praying? Let me give my microphone to them. They will share testimonies with you that you will not believe it. They, 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 they have relationship with God. They, are, they just don't do drama. You are the ones doing drama. You are the ones doing drama. I saw another pastor. This pastor will carry somebody up, will spin the person around, smack the guy on the floor, bam! Was beating the belly of a woman. Because of me, they go, what, what is that? What is all is that? I don't understand. I don't understand. And I believe that it's not just a There's something bad. There's something behind it. Our people are lazy. They are just taught goers. They are not believers. Find it difficult. Find it very difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. Thank you, Jerry Evangelist Abiola Fashino. Uh, thank you very much. You're doing a great job going traveling all over the world. That woman will teach pastors how to use social media. They think it's just by prayer. Their, their message will just appear on social media when they pray. They don't know you have to buy a camera. They don't know, Pastor Becky. Pastors in Nigeria don't know you have to buy a camera. They don't know that you have to buy a camera and you have to have a cameraman that will then the wire is supposed to go to a computer and then from the computer the internet will carry it and show it on Facebook. They don't even know they have to have a Facebook account. They just believe that Father, let our own let our service appear on Facebook. Let us everybody pray. Say appear, appear on Facebook. You see, that's the way they think. You think God is a magician, we just appear, they are so we just appear on Facebook without camera. That's what that's the way they think. That's that's how they think. They will pray. They will pray about it. They will pray. I, I went to a place. I told them, I said, hey, do you think God answered prayer? They said, yeah. I said, good. I said, the, the Bible says if two people join hands together and agree, God will do it. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, give me two people that believe in God. They came up. I said, hold your hands. I said, pray. I said, God, let a Mercedes appear here. And they started praying. I was just so shocked. That, Are these people crazy? And they started praying. And they prayed, 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 prayed until I stopped them. And when I stopped them, I said, hey, where is the Mercedes? And one of them said, it is in the spiritual realm. I said, oh, no, oh, yes, I said, it's not the will of God. If it is the will, that's what the Bible says. If you pray according to my will, it will be done. If it's not, it's not the will of God. And I've shared this before. Jesus Christ made the mistake. He prayed in the flesh. He was sweating. Anytime you see a man sweating, he's praying the wrong prayer. Jesus Christ made the mistake. He was praying a wrong prayer. He was sweating. And the Christians always say, ah, the sweat that was coming out of the brows of Jesus was like blood. Me too, I have to struggle. I have to pray. You are praying nonsense. Listen, when Jesus Christ went back to the same place, and when he changed his prayer point around, you know what he said? He said, let thy will be done. It's no longer my will, but your will. Let your will be done. The Bible says an angel came and ministered to him. It means that now God has answered the prayer because it's his will now. It is his own will. 
So he, he didn't have to pray for a long time. I didn't be as prayed that one from the beginning. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have stayed there and be sweating. The man was sweating there like blood because he was playing in the flesh. Because he didn't want to die. He didn't want to die. So it was his flesh that was telling him, let this call, let this call pass over. Let this call pass. That was the flesh. That was in the spirit. That was in the spirit. That was the flesh. So when he got back and said, okay, let thy will be done. The Bible now said, and the angels came to minister unto him. That's the mind of God. And then the Bible said in the book of Romans, he said, God knows the heart of us, of people. But he knows the heart of the spirit. That the spirit knows what God is thinking about. So the spirit is interceding on our behalf when we don't know what to pray for. So, we're supposed to connect to the Spirit to know the mind of God, to pray the mind of God, to pray His will. The will of God is in the mind of God. That's why He said, I know the thought I have for you is the thought of good, not of evil. How can we know the thought if we don't connect to the Spirit who knows the mind of God? And the Spirit intercede on our behalf. When we don't know what to pray about. And Jesus Christ resurrected. He went to the right side of the Father. He is interceding on our behalf. Two people. Two people are praying for us now. Two people are praying for us at the same time. The Holy Spirit and Jesus himself. So what exactly is wrong with you? Why are you praying all this? I believe you prayer. Nonsense prayer you are praying. Jesus Christ himself made a mistake because he was in the flesh. Because he was in the flesh. Let me not bore you guys. I'm boring you guys. I don't want to bore you guys at all. Let me just leave you guys alone. You know, because uh, I just don't want to bore you. Don't want to bore you guys. You know, just don't want to bore you guys. Oh. Church and nothing happened. Oh, I've been asking God. God, he opened. He said, as many that knocked the door, the door was open. The ones that asked God, God released something for them. The ones that were seeking, they found. They were not just finding and just going just like that. They were being led. That's what the Bible says. Those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. The people that can ask God for things are the people that are propelled by the Holy Spirit. The ones that are being moved by the Spirit. That's why the Bible says, He said, God is Spirit. And those that will worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You see, if you don't connect to the Spirit of God, you cannot know the mind of God. You can't know the mind of God. You have to know the Spirit first. You have to develop in the Spirit first. You have to connect to the Spirit first. And that Spirit dwells in you. You are the carrier of the Spirit. When the Spirit speaks to you daily, when the Spirit gives you instruction to you daily, I'm telling you, you will begin to know the mind of God. And then when you pray, you will not pray amiss. You will pray the mind of God. He said, if you pray according to His will, He will hear you. Don't just pray any kind of prayer. You pray 